Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video and we got some good gaming news this time. I know, it's been a while since we've received good gaming news. I mean, you remember back in April when Ubisoft announced the different editions for Star Wars Outlaws and everyone was like, Really? I need to spend 130 to just to get the Jabba the Hutt DLC? That seems pretty expensive. And then of course Escape from Tarkov went... <laughs> 130 for get or uh, the, the get the game and all this exclusive DLC <laughs> 250 dollars for a PVE mode that fans have been begging for a while. Oh, not to mention the fact that you know we did sell a 150 dollar bundle which said it would include all future DLC. But remember, uh, game modes are not DLC according from the Escape from Tarkov devs. And then they retrofit actually changed that $150 bundle, removed the word exclusivity in real time. Someone caught this, and overall was a kind of a move. I mean, fans have wanted a PVE mode. They decided to make an arena mode. That didn't do too well. And now the cost of running servers for this PVE mode is a bit much, so they need more money from their fans. $250 more from each fan. So, of course with uh, these developers and publishers being bad, I guess we should turn to EA, who decided they want to use more AA art or AI development tools. So good, good, good luck with that. Get ready for a load of EA games that are going to be super repetitive using AI art. It's just... It's going to be like the same systems. Oh god, could you imagine Ubisoft doing it as well? It's just going to be the same shit over and over again. Luckily, though, I'm sure uh, console manufacturers aren't going to mess up. You know, they're, they're the last bastions of hope, I guess. Nope, Sony and the Heil Divers 2. Update on that situation, you can go watch my original video on the PSN login uh, debacle with Heil Divers 2. Uh, since then, uh, the countries that weren't able to have a PSN login uh, still can't access the game. They still can't buy the game. And on top of that... All the other PlayStation games that are on Steam, they can't buy those either. Despite not needing a PSN account. Uh, we all thought, or some people thought, it, this was Steam's doing. No, it's from, it's, the Steam has come out and said, that's Sony's doing. So, yeah, Sony is just continuing to shoot themselves in the foot. But clearly, Xbox with your boy Phil Spencer, Game Pass. You know, they said they were going to release some of their first party games on the PlayStation. Like good old Hi-Fi Rush. The head of marketing was like, hey, we need more games like Hi-Fi Rush, right? We need games that are small, but are well-received, critic acclaimed, win prizes, uh, receive prizes and praise. We need those types of games. You remember back in 2018 when they thought we learned from our mistakes buying Lionhead? We're, we're going to not do that again. Phil Spencer, when De uh, Redfall came out, was like, we're actually going to let our studios make the games they want to make. Not really, haha, <laughs> JK, Ruffle, Copter, lol. They shut down four studios. Well, they shut down three studios, and one of the studios shut down, but all the staff merged to another studio. So, yeah, at this point, Xbox has shut down more studios than released first-party games. And it doesn't matter if the game was well-received or poorly received. Nah, our operation costs went up by 42% because, or 41% I believe, because, you know, we brought a giant company like Activision Blizzard King. God, who would have thought that that would increase our operational costs? Not me. Clearly, uh, there are rumors about it possibly being a Microsoft decision rather than an Xbox decision. But hey-ho, you should feel bad for Phil Spencer, according to Mike Yabara, a former Blizzard uh, CEO lead. Because, you know, I feel bad for the millionaire who still has a job. Don't feel bad for all the people who no longer have a job, who actually made a really great game and were about to pitch a sequel to Hi-Fi Rush 2, but uh, that's not happening either. So, who is our bastion in all this? Where is the good news coming from? Square Enix. I don't know how. Normally, the last few times I've seen news from Square Enix, they're trying to push NFTs and stuff. But no, today they've decided, hey guys, for our new term plan for the next three years, we're going to actually focus on multi-platform releasing. Finally, I knew it. I knew not buying a PlayStation 5 and actually waiting for Rebirth and 16 to come out on PC was going to pay off. You will thought I was crazy. You thought, nah, 
Now they won't change their minds. They they won't see it as a negative. They finally caved. Yes, Sony, uh, not Sony, Square Enix announced that they're actually looking to multiple platform release. That's a good, huge hype. Except they've sort of decided this before and then changed their mind. Now, some of you may not remember, but back in the PlayStation Xbox One, especially beginning of it from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4, uh, Square Enix was sort of doing a similar thing where they were like, uh, maybe console exclusives aren't that great. We're going to be focusing on multiple platform releases, which resulted in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15 getting released on the Xbox. Now, I was there on the mix of days where X uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 was released on the Xbox One, and a number of uh, people I watched and knew brought Kingdom Hearts for the first time. They brought Kingdom Hearts 3, which is basically the end of a saga spanning multiple games and multiple systems and basically had no idea what the plot was, no idea who Sora was, what the hell was going on. But hey-ho, I, I assume they, some of them had fun. And of course, Final Fantasy XV, the game that was originally Final Fantasy XIII versus, but because XIII got a load of sequels, they changed it to XV, kind of stopped development for a while, then gave it two years and it released in a somewhat state. I mean, you could play it, but there was a lot missing, but luckily it had DLC, but yeah, that was it. And then the game kind of just was there, and I assume Square Enix decided, hey, maybe this multiple platform thing wasn't a good idea, and went back to console exclusives, and now they've changed their mind again. So in the next three years, they're going to be seeing if this is going to pay off. Honestly, developers and publish or publish mainly have such high expectations for stuff. They probably think, oh, we've released our stuff on Xbox as well. It's going to double the sales. It's probably not going to happen. And they're just going to go back to console exclusives. And then they realize, well, nobody really, less people bought the game because I guess it was on PlayStation 5. Maybe we should re-release it on Xbox and PC again. And then it'll just go through cycle, through cycles. The game industry repeats itself a lot. But for now... Hopefully this means the part 3 for Final Fantasy 7 is going to be released straight away on PC, on Xbox. Even though most of the time the PC editions for stuff come a bit later because for some reason Square Enix really struggles developing stuff for the PC. I'm sure some of you remember when Final Fantasy 7 Remake got released on PC and even high-end PCs for some reason struggled to run that game. The game could run on the PlayStation 4, but put it on a PC, oh my god, you go into anywhere that's slightly open world, and the game just suddenly crawls to a halt. But hopefully, like I said, this means that Final Fantasy 7 Part 3 is just going to come straight to PC, and Xbox as well, and hopefully 7 Remake and all the other 7 parts, uh, and 16, also go to Xbox. We've also seen Final Fantasy XIV, the online MMO, also head over to Xbox. So that's good. Hopefully this is now, we're in a stage where Square Enix is just like, you know what, we're a publisher. We don't need console exclusivity. Let's just get all our games out on all platforms, except for the Switch, because Jesus Christ, do you think the Switch could run Final Fantasy VII Remake, let alone Rebirth? That little cartridge system could not even store Final Fantasy VII OG and Final Fantasy VIII slightly texture update anyway let me know what you think in the comment section down below i'm quite happy for this even though i'm pretty sure at some point they're just going to change their minds again and go console exclusivity also we don't know if square has already signed a deal with um, sony to make the ff7 mainline stuff a timed exclusive so maybe it'll be other stuff like kingdom hearts 4 might just not be a timed exclusive, maybe the remake of 9 that's been going around rumoured for god knows how many years, please make it real, then again please don't, I don't know what I want anymore, I just want to consume at a reasonable price because I ain't buying a in PlayStation 5, and luckily I might not have to, or well, actually I, won't go, I wasn't going to anyway, I'm literally 16 and 7 Reaper for timed exclusive, so Hopefully no more timed exclusives. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And, um, yeah. A lot of L's. But we got, we got a slight W today. Goodbye. Morse. Marvelous. Together on the track. Let's go. Red sus, red sus. Red sus, red sus. 
Red sauce, red sauce, red sauce, sus. red sauce, 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 sus.